First comes first, right? We're gonna cover the beginner's guide to financial freedom. After that, we're gonna actually show you how to get free locations for your ATM business. And then at the end, it's gonna be extremely special. All right, guys, so I am back and doing the weekly live trainings here with Get em Jonas, ATMtogether.com. Guys, welcome, welcome on this What's fine Tuesday. On? What's going on, man? Man, I am excited to be here. I'm excited for you to be here. I was stressing last time. I was just like, Paul, we need you. The people no. need you. They're sending me messages. They want you. I, absolutely, absolutely. I uh, I definitely missed being on the live last week, guys. Sorry, I was in a bad reception. As you guys know, uh, many, especially the clients know, I've been going back and forth back home to San Francisco, take care of my parents on some medical issues that's been going on with yeah. the family. You know, to me, family is number one. That's my why for entrepreneurship. But anyways, besides the point, for all the viewers are brand new, okay? Let me uh, break down exactly how this works. It's a 45-minute training inside of here, ETM Business for Beginners, the largest ATM niche group on Facebook, guys, okay? And it's all about interaction, guys. So please ask questions, interact with us. If you have questions, trust me, no question is too simple. We break it down from A to Z, okay? Now, if you are new, go ahead and comment new. That's gonna be N-E-W, comment new in the comments right now. Two things are gonna happen. One, our team members are gonna see who you are because every single person in here in our community is special. And then number two, we're gonna provide you with actual free guide and a mini course, okay? So if whether you saw one of our ads, whether you got a uh, referral from a actual client of ours, hey, who doesn't like free stuff, right? So go yeah. ahead and comment new. Exactly, exactly. Let's see where you guys are from also. So Jeremy, Semi new, I like that. <laughs> so it must be you have been in the group for a little bit. I like that. First time I actually seen that in the cons. But let us find out. Hey, what city and state are you guys from? I personally am actually in Mexico right now. I am like I don't know how the Wi Fi is working, but I'm in Mexico. Comment below what city and state you guys are watching from. We want to see where we're getting to. Help us out with the algorithms, right? We want to see exactly where you guys are tuning in from. Okay, Tennessee, Brent, very cool. NYC in the house. Jamaica, Queens, bro, Mike, what's up, man? I see you. <laughs> Compton, California. Man, I got a story about Compton. The first time I went there. Travis, you're probably going to laugh. <laughs> Allison, Virginia, very cool. DMV, I like that. So we actually have a lot of people usually tuning in from the DMV. West Covina, okay, SoCal, that's what I'm talking about. And Greenville, South Carolina. The nice. Carolinas in the house. Yep. Do you know? Yeah. Did you know you're supposed to call them the Carolinas if they're from North or South Carolina? I had no idea. Somebody corrected me the other day. <laughs> and let's see. I mean, and short I saw, story. Every, yeah. every in the East Coast, you know, I, I I used to be a law enforcement guy, so I used to have a coworker that I would see almost every single day at the office, and that coworker was actually from Brooklyn, New York. So then he transitioned to uh south carolina and he was telling me about one of his uh exes and he was like yeah she she was from the carolinas i was like what is the carolinas because i've always been a, a, a cali guy guys so if you guys don't know i'm originally from san francisco i'm currently in san diego um but he was just like yeah man whenever you hear you talk to anybody from the east coast just say the Carolinas, you'll instantly build foundation. And it's, and it's work. It's work for me, guys, especially yeah. when I started the company, I had a ton of clients in the East Coast and I would always say, oh, you're from the Carolinas. And it was like instant report, you know? So it's a good exactly. thing. All exactly. right, guys. Exactly. So we're going to get into our background story. So if you guys didn't know why you should be listening to us, why are we the faces behind this group and ATMtogether.com? Well, let me introduce myself. My name is Paul Alex. I'm founder and CEO of ATMtogether.com and ATM Business for Beginners on Facebook. I started my ATM venture six years ago. I was originally a detective in law enforcement for the past seven years, guys. And before that, I was in corporate America for six years. All that good stuff. Uh, door knocking, cold calling, you name it, I've done it. But 
at the end of the day, I wanted to get out of the nine to five to go and spend time with family, to actually enjoy life, to actually go out there and experience the world. I love to travel, guys. If you guys look at my profile, you guys look at the pictures that I post, I'm uh, I, how you would like to say a world traveler. So with that being said, I went from one to 30 locations within 18 months, guys. And to some of you being brand new, you're like, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to do one location. I'm telling you right now, guys, 30 locations in the ATM realm with the OGs and the big dogs in the industry is small potatoes. I'm going to tell you that right now, okay? I, in my mind, I wanted to build a small route that would actually just cover my bills. That was my ultimate goal. Just cover my bills and then go ahead and escape the nine to five. So then I can focus and build other businesses, not only to actually build my financial freedom, but to help individuals just like you. And that's exactly what I did. In January of 2021, I created etmtogether.com. It's the first digital company to actually be a one-stop shop for beginners and anybody who would want to deal with a company like us. We are, you could say, um, very, very transparent when it comes to doing business. Uh, knowing that our background, I mean, we have folks in the military, we have even a couple of federal judges to get them will always tell you this. He, he loves saying that just because <laughs> it was it was almost like, really, you want to do ATM? Yes. Right. Everybody wants to do ATMs. Um, we have people in, in uh, as first responders. We have real estate agents, real estate investors. We even got real estate investors saying that the ROI is better in ATMs than it is in real estate. Hey, an income for me. Don't kill the messenger. OK, but with that being said, guys, yeah, it's remarkable. The community we built, we're close to what, 34,000 people in this group, which is wonderful. OK, yeah. and we're just growing. We're just growing consistently. So that is my background. That is one of a couple reasons why you should be listening to me. But as you're going to see during this presentation, guys, I'm going to go ahead and actually explain my experience, my knowledge, and actual life lessons that I've learned so you guys could go ahead and start your business without yeah. a flaw. Yeah, exactly. Hey, guys, I'm Getum Jonas, COO. Basically, what that means is I run operations. I'm the glue that keeps the machine going, all right, ever since the Marines, right? Because once I turned 18... You know, I had a job doing the Marine Corps. Shout out to the Marines out there. Hoorah, right? Anybody in the military, at the end of the day, we're all equal, but some of us are more equal, all right? <laughs> but with that being said, I'm kidding. Just kidding. I started off, I mean, my, my parents were immigrants, right? They came over from a very small country in this really small portion of Africa. Came over. I was blessed and lucky to have the opportunity to be here. I wanted to show my gratitude, turned 18, joined the Marine Corps. Three days after I turned 18, I just knew that I was from Marine. I knew college wasn't for me. How many of you guys are in that same boat where you just decide, you know what? I don't want to go down that traditional route. Well, after the Marines, I decided to do a few different government employment jobs, right? Started a few businesses, invested in crypto. I think this was back in like 2016 when everyone said I had a tinfoil hat on, right? Did no, I didn't do too bad. Okay. I didn't do too bad. And so it got me to the point where I'm here now. I'm, I'm in Mexico talking to you guys, right? I can work wherever I want. And for me, the biggest satisfaction for me, because I've always believed in servitude, right? Ever since my parents came over, I always believed I had to give back to the community. So this is my way of giving back to the community, because at the end of the day, I want to make sure you guys are successful also, okay? And Paul brought up something funny about real estate, right? I'm no real estate expert. I do have some rental properties in the Bay Area. I saw somebody comment Berkeley. That's in California, guys, if you didn't know, that has actually some of the best restaurants. But man, compared to ATMs, that real estate investment's painful right now, man. I'm like, I'm like this, barely breaking even. Like it's, you know, when you're swimming, right? Anybody else in the military, anybody who's been swimming, you know, right? When you're swimming and you're barely keeping above water, that's how it is compared to ATMs. So it was funny you mentioned that, Paul. No, yeah, man. I mean, I think everybody's feeling it nowadays, especially because if you're a serial entrepreneur, I mean, I've been mm -hmm. an entrepreneur all my life. It's just, you know, I mm -hmm. had to go through the transition of two careers. Yeah. But right now, I think everybody's feeling it, especially, I mean, I'm saying we're in a recession right now. Yeah. We're not, we're not going into, no, we're in a recession right now. Crypto investments are down, real mm -hmm. estate, as you guys can see, 
the game has changed, guys. Yep. The game has changed. So it is time to diverse your money, to make sure you invest in yourself. Mm-hmm. Okay. Don't put all your eggs in one basket because at the end of the day, no one else is going to cover you. It's just you. So it's always you versus you. All right. So exactly. Exactly. Okay. So with that being said, guys, we are about to run out of time, Paul. We cannot take too much time. So I want to get into the topics. We have phenomenal lessons for you guys today. I'm actually very excited. Paul's going to announce something at the end, but first comes first, right? There's a joke in the military. I actually just told this to somebody. We call it the TLOs, right? The terminal learning objectives, right? It's kind of like, you know, school when they say Bueller, Bueller, right? It's always the same lessons. I don't like that. I'm not a teacher. I like to make this fun. So we're going to go through this quick, make it very relevant to you. So we're going to cover the basics, all right? We're going back to the basics because when it comes to business, you need to be successful. That means foundation. So we're going to cover the beginner's guide to financial freedom, which we call the ATM business, okay? After that, we're going to go into ATM mastery. What do I mean by that? Well, we're going to actually show you how to get free locations for your ATM business. Okay. So Paul actually has a special announcement at the end of the slide. Make sure you tune in. First of all, we're going to give you phenomenal value. And then at the end, it's going to be extremely special. So Paul, why don't you start us off? Yeah, absolutely. So let's go ahead and start off with lesson one, guys. Lesson one, back to the basics, a beginner's guide to financial freedom, right? So in this lesson, I always like to do overviews. Just think of it class in section. I always uh, get, get clients saying, hey, where's your whiteboard? I really like those lessons where you brought the whiteboard. I was like, yeah, man. But what ended up happening is I keep running out of ink. So (laughs) I'm just going to go ahead and and go do PowerPoint presentations, or I'm just verbally going to say it to you guys. All right. So in this lesson, we're going to be covering the LLC, why it's important to get the LLC over sole prop. Okay. And we're going to have get them cover that for you guys. Business bank account, business bank account. Why is it so important in the ATM business? Well, we're going to show you how to actually search and get approved by the bank in 2022 It's one of the most common questions that we get inside of ATM business for beginners, guys. And then we're going to go over processing network. If you don't know what processing network, don't worry, I got you, okay? So how it works and how to make money from ATMs. Because at the end of the day, I know we're going to get a few people in here that are probably like, well, how how exactly do we make money? Trust me, no question is too simple, guys. At the end of the day, we're all beginners. We all have to start somewhere. So that's why we're here. We're here to help you, okay? And then lastly, we're going to go into vendors, and locations, how to get the best rates for your ATMs and services, okay? So we're going to go ahead off and start off with Getem and the LLC, guys. For sure, for sure. All right, guys, if you guys are excited, right, because after this training, you need to be able to form your LLC, all right? I get this question all the time. If you're excited to learn exactly what you need to do for your LLC, comment LLC below. Help us with the algorithms. The more you comment, the more this reaches out to people. Again, there's enough out there for everybody, guys. That's why we're doing this absolutely free for you guys. Absolutely free. We are not getting paid to teach. We're not getting paid to be here on a Tuesday at 5 p.m. every Tuesday. Okay. Comment below. I'm excited to get you guys started. So with that being said, when it comes to LLC, I get this question all the time. What does LLC even stand for? That is a very good question. There's multiple definitions, all right? It's kind of like Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. You guys remember that movie back in the day? All the the riddles and all the rhymes? Well, LLC can stand for Limited Liability Company, Limited Liability Corporation. There's all these different ways, the different acronyms for it. I think there's four or five, right? With that being said, all it is is a business entity. I mean, how many of you guys want to be entrepreneurs? How many of you guys are entrepreneurs? Typically, this is the first step to saying you own a company because literally once you form your LLC, you own the company, Like there's nobody else. Like there's nothing that's different between you and Apple or Facebook or Microsoft. Same thing, just size. Okay. So common question that comes up, I actually get clients asking all all the time. They say what? They say, again, I'm like, why do I need an LLC? There's all these different things out there. Right. I heard this thing called a sole proprietorship. Right. That's a lot of synonyms for me, guys. All right. I like to keep things simple because simplicity equals success. Okay. So with that being said, the reason why we recommend the LLC is because of protection. Okay. And it's also second reason, easiest thing to form. Okay. Think of it as like crossroads in a road. You know, when you're on the freeway and there's all these different options, 
They might all be fast, but one might be faster. The reason I bring up LLCs and, and come in close, guys, come in close, is because you can always transition to something else later. What do I mean? Well, if you want to turn into one of those other things, which is called a C corporation, you can do that later. You just file a form. If you want to turn into an S corporation, you can do that later. You just file a form. But when you want to go back to LLC, it's just a little more paperwork. So we say, hey, start simple, form an LLC. And with that, when you decide to form that LLC, have a few things. Okay. So before you even do this, there's a few things you want to know. Okay. First of all, you want to know where your business address is. I know, I know, I know. People tell me this all the time. Like, yeah, I'm like, that, that's that's too simple. Like, I know simple equals success, but then there's too simple. But no, I don't think there is. Okay. Like I said, right. When it comes to businesses, you want to keep it simple for efficiency also. Okay. So what I mean by that is you want to know what address you're going to file because there's nothing worse than when you're filling out an application or a form online. And you guys know what I'm talking about. And then you forget something like you need a zip code, for example, or maybe when you're buying something online and you need that last three digits of your credit card number and you can't find your card and you're running around and then the page refreshes. I don't like that. Okay. So with that being said, you want to have your address that you're going to use for your business. Typically nowadays, you're going to use your home address. You're probably not going to rent an office space because I mean, as you know, with the real estate, it's getting expensive. Renting locations are expensive also. You're talking uh, 500 to 1,000 a month minimum just for an office space. So use your home address. You're going to want to know how many people are in your LLC, meaning that if it's friends, families, a significant other will have their information ahead of time to file that too. Okay. You're also going to want to use a third party filing system. What do I mean by that? Well, instead of you actually printing out a piece of paper, filling it, handwriting it, there's actually online services. We recommend one called Inkfile. And hey, if anybody on the team is commenting, please comment Inkfile for anyone that wants to find this website. We are not associated with them. However, they are very quick when it comes to filing your LLC. So we do recommend using them. That's inkfile.com. Okay. With that being said, you also want to know the NAICS code. The acronym doesn't matter. All right. Write this down, guys. This is the key number that some attorneys could not even figure out, okay? The NAICS code for the ATM business is 522320, okay? That is 522320. That is a code that any state is going to ask you for the type of business, okay? That literally classifies you as an ATM business, an ATM entrepreneur. You need that code, okay? If you have an LLC already, another pro tip, it's okay. You can still use that LLC typically for the ATM business as long as you are current with the state. Okay, guys. So as long as you have those three things, you will be fine. And what were those again? Well, you want to follow the LLC. You want to know where your business is going to be at, who's going to be in your business, and how do you classify your business? The four things for your LLC, guys. And of course, what was that number again? 522-320. Okay, guys. Now, banks. Okay. This is like... Man, this is a hot topic when it comes to ATMs. Like literally, there are regions of states right now that you cannot get a bank for the ATM business. Think about that for a second. They are like shutting off regions. You're better off being in Puerto Rico right now. Start your ATM business. In certain states, you cannot find a bank. It is a hot topic when it comes to ATMs. So make sure you pay attention. All right. So when you want to find a bank in the ATM business, like I said, simplicity equals success. So for me, one thing I transferred over from military service was think big to small. And what do I mean by that? Okay. Well, what I mean is think big picture of all the locations with banks. Okay. And then start whittling it down. Because once you have a game plan, then you can figure out what you need to do next. So you want to form your LLC and you want to get your bank account. So finding a bank is a matter of finding a local bank that'll work with you. Big names, Chase, Bank of America, Wells Fargo, a few great places. I mean, I have Chase business checking accounts right now. However, they will not accept my ATM business. Funny story. I was opening another business checking account with Chase. The banker, I know she's phenomenal. She's been with me for years, right? She is basically like my significant other when it comes to the ATM business, right? Well, I told her to open a new checking account. I wanted to go in person. I'm old school. I like that relationship, which is another key 
maintain a relationship with the bank you find for your business. Okay, that's a hidden gem that actually comes from our processor ATM guru, Mike Sandone. If you're watching Mike, you know what I'm talking about. Well, maintain a relationship. Well, I went over there, went to open the bank account. And, you know, she asked, hey, get up, you know, how's business doing? It's pretty good. You know, we had small talk. She was drinking a coffee, pretty relaxed. It was just a matter of opening, basically adding another line. And she, at the end, she approved the account. She gave me the checks. She said the checking account or the actual debit card is coming in the mail. We actually ordered a new credit card for you also. And she said, oh, I forgot to ask, what kind of business is it? And, you know, me, I like to, I like to laugh. I like to have some fun, right? Well, I said, hey, it's, it's for the ATM business. She literally spilled her coffee. I'm talking like all over the place, right? Because she said, are you kidding me right now? You know, we can't accept ATM businesses, okay? And I, you know, of course I said, I'm kidding, right? We had to wipe things down a little bit. Luckily I didn't get on the checks, okay? But that should tell you something. It is a high risk business. Big banks will not work with you. So for you to find a bank, you have to have due diligence, right? There's gonna be some setbacks. You're gonna have to call different banks in your area. I like to stick to local banks. What do I mean by that? Well, first of all, you're supporting your local businesses. And second of all, since they're smaller banks, they have more leniency. Because when you start dealing with a big bank, all it takes is one thing to happen and they change their entire policy. Okay. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, there's bad apples in the industry. Back in the day, there were some gurus. They were telling people, hey, it's okay. Get your first few ATMs. Use your personal checking account. You'll be fine. They'll never find out. Well, how many of you guys get credit card rewards? I know I do, right? You get like 2% cash back for this, 10% for this, whatever. Well, when they give you those categories, how do they find out? You didn't tell them. Well, those businesses have NAICS codes and certain transactions are flagged, okay? Meaning what? It's associated to businesses. So they know when you're going to a restaurant, then you're going to this. So if you have all this money coming back to your account because your ATM is killing it, you find a very good location and you are killing it in the game. Don't you think your bank's going to call you and say, hey, they get them, man. Like, I know you're working, you get two paychecks a month, but why is there like 46 deposits in your account? What are you going to say? Well, it's for my ATM business. Red flag. Your bank account is shut down. Banks communicate with each other. There's a thing called the check system. There's basically a file with your name on it that all banks can see. So be truthful with the bank. That's another gem, okay? Another thing you want to focus on is just calling the banks. Find all the small local banks, credit unions, ask them. And this is exactly what you want to ask them. Pay attention, guys. Write this down. When you call them, you're going to say, hey, I'm looking to open a business checking account to accept my commissions for my ATM business. That's exactly what you want to ask them. They may need to talk to a manager. They may need to talk to a senior banker because bankers are humans, just like you and me. Okay. Just like you, just like me. They may not know. You may be the first person, which is a good thing, but you're going to get a few no's. However, when you get that yes, well, that's probably going to be the most sweetest thing. Okay. So remember, guys, just a quick recap for this lesson. When you want to get your business checking account, all right, big to small, meaning that write down a list of the locations with banks, cross out all the big name banks. It's, it's a waste of your time calling them. Find the small local banks. Once you do, use that script I just told you to open the accounts. And then once that account is open, maintain a relationship. I said that in the beginning, but maintain a relationship. I'm telling you, it will do you dividends in the future. Because when they decide to change their policy, which they can, they're going to say, you know what? Gannam's been great to us. Jessica has been great to us. We're going to grandfather her account in, and they're going to keep your account open, guys. Now, if you enjoyed that lesson, comments, location, all right? Comment location, because Paul is going to tell you something special later, but we need you to help us out with the algorithms, guys. Thanks. Yeah, phenomenal, phenomenal uh, lesson right there. Get them. So go ahead and comment locations right now, guys. Uh, we'll make sure to reach out to you. Team members will reach out to you and go ahead and provide you with some free uh, PDFs. We have made over 10 different PDFs on almost every single section of the ATM business. So we have all these free resources for you guys. Just make sure that you guys comment location. And for everyone who is actually asking, get them. 
Can you repeat that one more time? I got you. So when you talk to the banker, you're going to say, I want to open a business checking account to collect my commissions for my ATM business. And that's it, guys. It is very black and white. I know it sounds super simple, but at the end of the day, simplicity equals success. Just like what Gedham said earlier, it's true. I have told this to literally hundreds upon hundreds of clients, and we have successfully opened a thousand accounts. Well, the clients have on their behalf, but we have assisted them with opening over a thousand bank accounts within the ATM industry within the past 10 months, guys, which is phenomenal. Okay. So let's go ahead and go over processing. Okay. And we're trying to keep each section five minutes because I know you guys are all busy and especially in the East Coast, you guys are ready to go to bed, you know, uh, like to wake up early, just like myself. So let's go ahead with processing. If you've never heard of processing, in the ATM industry, processing is basically the network that facilitates the actual transactions between your ATM, which I like to call my little employee, the actual banking network, and your business checking account. So what does this do? Well, a couple of things, guys. This network actually is what gets you paid. The network that we use at ATMtogether.com is called Switch Commerce, okay? Uh, like a light switch, commerce. And with that, they actually go ahead and they facilitate all of your transactions. So how do you get paid? That is the real question. At the end of the day, why do we want to start a business? Ultimately, to make our money work for you. You know, when I was growing up, I was very ignorant with the meaning financial freedom. I thought financial freedom is making, hey, six figures and I could go to the store and buy whatever I want, right? No, financial freedom is when you can actually make the same amount of money you are currently making right now, right? But working less or not working at all. That is true financial freedom because you're able to leverage your actual money to make yourself more money. And that's what the ATM business is. That's why I love this business concept. It's very black and white, it's very simple. And when I learned about it, I was like, thank you, thank you, finally, right? Because I knew it was gonna be the one. I knew it was gonna be the one. So. With that being said, guys, um, the way it works, let's say you have $1,000. You put the $1,000 inside of the ATM and you have 10 clients coming in and actually withdrawing $100 each, okay? The average in the United States is around $40 to $60 um, transaction, by the way, all right? Fun fact, if you didn't know. So let's say you have 10 clients. Let's say you're in California and you charge $4, which is normal, guys. I mean, the average right now, it actually went up from $3 to $3.50 if you didn't know. So people are making money. Trust me. We're not charging no $2.50. We're not charging no 99 cents. We're not charging $2 anymore. <laughs> $3.50, guys. As you can see, with inflation, everything goes up. Same thing with the surcharges, okay? That means people can afford it. So at the end of the day, you Let's say you're making $4 per transaction. 10 people come in. That's $40 in one single day. You take that $1,000 that now the network transfers over to your business checking account and you physically go to the bank, withdraw the $1,000, and all you're simply doing is loading up your ATM back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. In the meantime, you are collecting. The fees, you are collecting that $40 per day. So you are making your money work for you. Think about it like this. How many of you guys have around $1,000 right now in your bank account? Go ahead and comment me. That's going to be M-E. Go ahead and comment me. And the reason why I, I want to ask you this is because I want to prove a point. I want to actually show you my vision. The same thing that I think about any time that I see an ATM. Anytime that I use someone else's ATM, I always envision that person making money off of me because it's a convenience. ATMs is a convenience, guys. So at the end of the day, we are conveniently putting the ATM at locations so people don't have to drive a mile, two miles, three miles, four miles away from where they're at. Okay. It just makes sense. This is a very black and white business. Simplicity equals success, guys. Okay. So, Processing, that is the basics. I hope 
Every single one of you know exactly how to make money off of the ATMs now. You are able to recycle your money. I used the $1,000 um, example, and I used the actual example of the 10 clients and the fees, and now you know how you make your money. Now, with processing, a lot of the processing companies out there, they actually charge a fee for this network. This network is equivalent to a cell phone company. If you want to think about it like that, cell phone companies, they charge you a monthly rate. We do not, okay? What I'm going to tell you right now is a couple gold nuggets. So make sure that you guys actually write this down right now, whether you have a pen, whether you have notes, whether you're going to tell it to your spouse that you're currently watching this with, you want to tell them, look, two things to remind ourselves when we go and actually talk to a processing company. Number one, I want to keep all of my surcharge profits. That's number one. OK, do not ever let anyone take a percentage of your surcharge profits. That's what happened to me when I started, guys. I was very gullible. At the end of the day, I thought I knew everything because I come from a sales background and I have a, I'm, you know, a little business savvy, you could say, but at the end of the day, what you don't know is what you don't know. So I had to educate myself, of course. That's why I'm a big believer in self-education. And then the second thing is don't ever sign a, uh, a contract for the term of service, meaning that they will tie you down from one to five years. OK, I've even seen one where they tied somebody down for 10 years, which I was like, oh, my God. So at the end of the day, these are the two things you want to make sure when you go ahead and you actually go and try to find a processing company to work with. And also another golden nugget. This is going to be a third one. Try to find a company where you're able to facilitate the purchase of the ATM. From the same company, you're going to get the processing. And the reason why I tell you that is because they're going to give you a discounted rate off of the ATM when you use other services, because you're going to need the internet. You might need tech services. You might need vaulting services. And if you don't know what these services are, I'm going to explain that in just a minute, guys. Okay. When we're going to go ahead and talk about vendors and let me go ahead and actually reset the clock. Cause now we're going to move on to the next lesson guys. So if you guys have any questions, go ahead and drop it down in the comments right now. I'm going to go ahead and look at the comments real quick before I go ahead and move on. And I do not see, say the third point again. Third point is make sure that you actually get all of your services from one company. Because I've seen it multiple times, dozens of times, where someone will get their ATM from one source, and then they're going to get the processing network from another source. What ends up happening is you end up paying more overall. It is more cost effective if you deal with just one company as a one-stop shop to get everything. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and move on to vendors and locations. Yes, we are going to have a recap. Make sure if you guys are looking to get a replay of this video, if you guys want us to go ahead and tag you on the video and to send you this video tomorrow morning, go ahead and comment replay right now. That's going to be R-E-P-L-A-Y comment replay right now. Okay. Vendors and locations, guys. With vendors and locations, like I said, you want to go ahead and you want to try to get everything on one vendor. The reason why I tell you this is because I've had several clients who have pre-purchased their ATM, let's say on Amazon or let's say on eBay. And then what comes to find out is that it already comes preset with a contract already. And they are mandated to use that ATM with that specific processing network. Here's the messed up part about this. The messed up part behind this is the fact that now they don't have any say over what percentage they're going to give to that processing network. That processing network can say, well, we hooked you up with the price in the beginning, right, off the ATM. But now you owe us a percentage of each transaction every time that someone uses your ATM. You never, ever want to sign a deal like that. That's what happened to me. So personal story time, guys. So when I started, I ended up starting with six ATMs. And you're probably like, six ATMs? What are you talking about? Well, here's the thing. So before I was in law enforcement as a detective, I was actually in sales. And I'm going to say I was pretty decent. I never like saying I'm the best. I'm never, I never like saying I'm, I'm the greatest because I very low key. I just keep my head down and I like to work. I, sh- I let my results show. Okay, guys. So 
I was in sales. So I knew how to cold call. I knew how to prospect. I knew how to talk to people. I knew how to do presentations, all that jazz. And at the end of the day, I'm going to tell you this as a serial entrepreneur to another entrepreneur that is currently watching this right now, you, is that soft skills is one of the highest paying skills out there, guys. And if you want to learn how to be a multimillionaire, okay, that is the number one skill I would recommend that you guys actually learn, okay? Now, with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, finish off the story. So I ended up buying six ATMs. And when I bought the six ATMs, I didn't do my due diligence with the locations. I just went out to any location and I was so excited like any beginner would, because we see this all the time, guys. And we're like, hey, so I got this automated teller machine, which is what ATM stands for, guys. And I can offer it for you for free. And I'll give you a percentage if you'd like, right? And most business owners, merchants, they will say, yes, that sounds phenomenal, Paul. Let's do it. Well, I didn't check the foot traffic. I didn't check the, the reason for uh, the actual account to be cash driven. None of that, guys. So at the end of the day, I didn't really have a formula to actually verify if the location was going to do well. And I did not network beforehand. So I didn't really know anyone in the industry when I first started, just like most of us, right? So at the end of the day, what you don't know is what you don't know, guys. And what I learned from those six locations after I installed them, I learned the hard way, guys. Trust me, it hurt. So half of those locations, I made probably 50 bucks my first month. It hurt, guys, okay? And on top of that, I was driving two hours in traffic. I was driving at the time, I remember... Uh, I decked out this, this Dodge Ram, all black. Uh, I mean, I even put mud tires on it. So I, I was probably getting like 10 miles per gallon, guys, right? Ridiculous. But anyways, I was driving this big old truck to go fill my ATMs. And ultimately, I was losing money, losing money every time I would go fill up the ATMs. The other three ATMs, they were actually doing quite well. I had one that was making 300. I had one that was making 500. I had another one that was making like 280. So remarkable numbers for the first month because based on my experience, and I'm going to tell you this right now, guys, based on your experience after I tell you this, is that AT apps, they have to get nurtured. So the first month is just the beginning. The second month is going to grow. The third month is going to grow. The fourth month is going to grow. And the fifth month is going to grow. You put the ATM sign, you market it, you get referrals, you start uh, changing uh, the offer as far as uh, inside. Maybe uh, they weren't a cash only business and you convinced, right? Or you influenced the owner to switch to be uh, cash only, which actually happened to one of my clients today. They said, Paul, like, you, you know, I told the owner, I'm about to take out the ATM if things don't change. And he built urgency, right? In business, you have to build urgency. So the owner's like, whoa, wait, 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 don't, don't take it out. I'll convert to cash only next month. And then let's see how the numbers are. And it worked. Now the owners switch into cash only, and they're going to see how the numbers are after that. So that is a tip for you guys. If your location is not doing well, or if you guys are looking to see different methods of possibly communicating with a merchant or an owner for your business. Okay. So. I sold six ATMs. So what I had to do after about two to three months, I had to yank those three ATMs out and I reinstalled them on other locations after I found a mentor, after I networked, after I picked someone's brain who was already at the level of success where I wanted to be at, guys. So at the end of the day, by my third month, I was already generating $3,000 in income from my ATMs. And the remarkable part about this, guys, is the simple fact that on one month from my actual nine to five, okay, I was only making around, I would say during that time, about a little bit over five grand a month, a little bit over five grand after taxes and all that, because you know, in California, they tax you, they tax you for everything. So with that, it was remarkable for me. Okay. It was an eye opener. It actually, this is what at me to push me forward to grow my business. Because at the end of the day, entrepreneurship is not easy. If it was easy, you would see every single person doing it, guys. I'm telling you this right now, it's just reality. So that was my roadblock initially was having 
50% of my ATMs fail on me and then getting over the hump, finding new locations, humbling myself down, finding a mentor, researching, redoing it again the proper way, reinstalling those ATMs, getting the results, and then finally having the supporting belief in my head that I can do this. Because at the end of the day, that's what it is. It's new, we're scared, and it's a business. Every single business out there is difficult, guys. No business is easy. As much as you know, we're all online here and people make it seem easy. No, the only reason why people make it seem easy online is because they already have years of experience doing it. I got, I just recently spoke in Atlanta, Georgia in front of a crowd for the very first time. And uh, I had quite a few nice folks tell me, Paul, how many times have you spoken or how long have you spoken for and I told him, you know what? This is my very first time speaking in public like that, like on a stage with everything. And it was decked out. And they were like, really? I can't believe that. Well, the only reason why I was so confident going on stage, right? Practice. This is equivalent to public speaking, guys. I'm speaking to you guys every single Tuesday. Okay. So I know what I'm talking about. I'm an expert in my industry. I've done it for years. I have the social proof to show you. So at the end of the day, this is what you guys are going to have to develop. This is called the fundamentals. Okay. And if anything, anyone else tells you otherwise, I'm telling you right now, they're not helping you. They're not helping you at all. What we do is we groom our clients to become entrepreneurs. We actually help them. Not only do we help you by guiding you with a team, but we also help you with the education portion. And I think that's what's missing in a lot of these programs or courses or whatever online, even though we don't sell a course, we sell services. So at the end of the day, guys, I'm gonna I'm leave you guys with this. If you guys are all in, and if you're ready to execute on your business and you're excited to get started, okay? Go ahead and comment all in. We're gonna jump into ATM Mastery how to get free locations for your ATM business. You guys are going to love this, guys. So go ahead and comment all in. That's going to be A-L-L-N-I-N. Go ahead and comment all in. I got a special surprise for you guys at the very end of this lesson. Go ahead and comment all in. And I'm going to go ahead and answer this question as we go ahead. Blow up the comments, guys. All right. How did you do your footwork inspection on locations to determine if it's a good, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming he's going to say good location because the, the comments are not blowing up guys. So um, cash, there has to be a reason for the actual location to be cash driven, right? So great example, liquor stores in California. Um, liquor stores in California, they, they do pretty decent no matter what state it is, but in California and specifically, I was initially told, okay, they were like, Paul, liquor stores are like golden gooses. And I was like, but they, they have credit card machines. They have merchant services. They were like, yeah, but check this out. In California, the lottery tickets, right? They have to use cash. They have to use debit. And majority of the time, the owners, they don't want to use uh, the, the debit card because they're getting charged a percentage yeah. of their, of their uh, merchant services, right? And then some, some of these folks in, in, in the businesses, they're getting charged thousands of dollars, guys. We're talking about literally 1500 and up a month in fees to use the credit card machine. So I just give you guys another golden nugget right there. If you guys are thinking like, how am I going to approach a business? I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. That could be your go-to every single time to initiate the conversation, guys. Merchant services. Go ahead and type that on the comments. Merchant services, guys. Bring up the merchant services. Ask them, how much are you paying for that? Well, what if I was to beat that? You don't have to tell them you're going to offer ATM, but at the end of the day, that's what you're going to offer, right? You're offering an ATM that's free. You might even give them a percentage if the store is good enough. So there you go, guys. That's a golden nugget right there. So let's go ahead and continue. Now, how to get free locations for your ATM business. And this is actually going to go back to an interview that we did with two college or previous college students, college graduates, actually. Um, Andrew and, and Derek uh, from last Tuesday, where Getem interviewed them. And one of the things that spoke out to me, guys, when they were speaking and 
man, these, these guys, they're young guys. They're like 21, 22, and they already got like 12 ATMs, guys, within their first year. I remember when I first launched, when I first started social media, and I wasn't on social media for six, seven years, guys. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't. I had to learn from step one, baby steps. And I started with Facebook, and then I started ATM Biz for Beginners and all that jazz, and it was rough. It was rough. Um, I, I had a lot of people uh, very negative online. I mean, I, I feel social media is just very negative in general. That's why I don't like to use it. But at the end of the day, I, I come from one, I come from two careers that they have built me to be in the trenches. Okay. So at the end of the day, I'm an adult. All right. And no one, no one is going to crush what I do. No one is going to go against what I say because my self-belief is higher than what any person that has anything negative to say about myself or my beliefs, okay? And we're talking about the vision because my vision is higher. My team sees my vision. This is why I was able to give them jobs. We're talking about 15 plus employees in a 10 month span. And I tell anybody, if you're going to talk mess. Okay. I don't like to cuss, but if you're going to talk mess about my vision and my dreams, what have you done? Whenever you get somebody and you tell them about your vision and you tell them, look, this is what I got. This is what I believe in. This is what's going to happen. Not, not if, not when, but this is going to happen. And that's what I tell everybody because I have so much belief in myself guys. And every single one of you guys should, if you guys seen any of my recorded lives, I talk with authority because I believe in myself, okay? So, story time, guys. Here is how I was able to expand to 30 locations so quickly in the ATM industry. And also, this is why some of my best clients have been able to expand to double-figure locations within the first six months. One word referrals, 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 referrals. It's one important aspect that I don't think we cover big enough in our program, in our life trainings. And I'm actually going to go ahead and do a training with my team this week on referrals. Referrals can be another source of income for any business. Okay. I believe the reason why ATM Together was a decent company its first year. And remember, I like to humble myself, guys. A decent company is because of our referrals. About 50% of our clientele was referral-based, if you did not know that. So that speaks greatness about what we do at our company, okay, and what we believe in transparency, integrity, and we're disciplined. We get the job done no matter what, guys, okay? And we tell you how it is, just how I'm explaining it to you guys right here on this live. So here's a few tips, and I actually got four solid tips that I want you to remember. And if you don't remember anything else on this training, I want you to remember these four things and to leave this with the value that I'm providing to you on this live training. And that's going to be number one. When you provide anything of value to a client, to a prospect, to a business partner, that's when you want to ask for the referral. So that means ask at the right time. It's not saying that you're greedy. It's not saying that you're trying to take advantage of somebody. Close mouths don't get fed, guys. You have to go in life and take it. You got to take what is yours because no one else is going to do it. So don't wait for anybody. Do it for yourself. Prove every single naysayer wrong. Okay? Because life is short, guys. Trust me. Life is short. The older I get at the age of 34, the more I see that. I can't even remember my 20s. It's crazy. So. Ask at the right time. You go in for an emergency call when the ATM is down, 
cool. Hey, Tom, I'm just using an example for the merchant owner's name. Hey, Tom, I got the ATM up and running. Let me know when you guys need anything else. Hey, Paul, you're the best. Hey, Tom, by the way, would you know anyone else who I could provide this service to? Actually, I do. Call me on Monday. That's exactly how it went down, guys. Every single time. I didn't have to go and prospect day and night. Once I got up to eight locations, my referral game was on fire. And every single one of your guys' referral games need to be on fire too. If you're not asking, anytime you provide value, every time you go for a service call, anytime you do something of value for your clients, you are doing yourself a disservice. Be an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur, leaders. And you guys are leaders. Number two, offer a reward program, guys. Don't be stingy. I'm going to tell you this flat out. Being greedy in the very beginning when you're building your business, how are you supposed to scale? At the end of the day, I reinvested majority of my assets into my businesses, which is why they have grown to where they're at right now. And I continue to do that every single week. I invest in my employees. I'm flying out majority of my guys to, if you guys never heard of this, but ClickFunnels. I never knew about ClickFunnels till like two years ago or a year and a half ago when I started social media. But it's one of the biggest events in digital marketing, guys. I'm taking out the whole team because I want to inspire them. I want to inspire them because every single one of them are leaders. So if you guys don't have a team yet, you got to inspire yourself because it's always you versus you. So don't be greedy. Reinvest in your, in your business. And what do I mean by that? If somebody offers you a referral, tell them this. Look, hey, Tom, I appreciate the referral. What I'm going to do for you is I'm actually going to go ahead and shoot you around $250. You guys can go up to $500 or whatever you want, depending on what the referral is. But ultimately, shoot them a little something. It's going to go a long way, guys. I'm telling you this right now. I had, in particular, one barbershop. Really good guy. Really good guy. He was actually a motivational speaker. And I think that's why we got along so well. But ultimately, <clears throat> he was like, man, Paul. He was just like, hey, I appreciate you shooting me some money for that referral. He's just like, um, how, many, how many referrals do you cap you know, your clients at? I was just like, what do you mean? He was like, well, if you're giving $250 per referral, you're going to run out of money soon, right? Because you're, you're just starting out the, the, the business. And this was a long time ago. This is almost six years ago. And I was like, you know what? It, it's okay. It's all right. Because at that time, I was using my nine to five active income, guys, right? working the overtime, the blood money to fund what I knew was going to grow in the future. So then ultimately I was just like, don't worry about that. I'll take care of that. Just keep the referrals coming. And that client in particular, he was able to give me five clients, guys, five clients. At the end of the day, instead of me spending hundreds of hours going to prospect, he literally saved me hundreds of hours, thousands of dollars in my time, in my time to go and prospect, just to shoot them a little bit of cash, good faith, good business, networking. Your network is your net worth, guys. I'm a strong believer in that. And it's a simple reward program. Simplicity equals success. Number three, partner up with other service providers. Now, if you're not part of a community yet, you actually are. You're part of ATM Business for Beginners. So if you have a lead in another state, what I recommend you guys do, post it in the group, guys. Post it in the group. Be like, hey, guys, I got a lead in this state. Ready to talk to the owner. Um, looking for somebody to go ahead and install. Put it out there, guys. I'm telling you right now. There are hundreds of people looking through these groups for leads like that. And they're going to kick you back some. Always works, okay? Number four, you need social proof, guys. Social proof in the online space, in business in general is everything now, okay? I market my clients. If you look at Instagram, okay? And if you're not following me on Instagram, go ahead and follow me, the Paul Alex. 
on Instagram. I just got my account back. They took me down for a month. Those hackers, man, it's crazy. And then also offer the company or um, follow the company on IG ATM together as well. You're going to get great content, most motivational, some good reels that we're recording, all that jazz. Okay. So you guys are going to love it. It's going to help you out tremendously. But when you get your first client, no matter if it's your first client, no matter if it's your 10th client, ask them for a testimonial. There is nothing more powerful than a video testimonial saying, look, Paul at ATM together, help me accomplish this. Okay. That is powerful, especially when someone else who is completely new to your network is looking to do business with you. At the end of the day, being an entrepreneur, you're skeptical. You're skeptical on, man, what business should I invest in? Am I doing it the right way? You want to analyze everything. Well, we get stuck on analysis paralysis, guys. So at the end of the day, you want to make sure that you execute, execute, execute. Success loves speed. If you've never heard that, it's true. Okay. So at the end of the day, try to get your case studies, try to get your social proof. That way, when you go talk to the next prospect, you can show them your testimonials. And if you're old school like me, I used to go out there with the brochures. I used to have a folder and I made the folder really nice with my testimonials. It'd be a letter from each individual client saying how great my services is and how I'm the best in my area. So that is four golden tips, a little bit of a story to help you guys succeed in this business because I want every single one of you guys to succeed, okay? Now, go ahead and comment yes if you are ready for your free location from atmtogether.com, guys. We're going to go ahead and break it down for you right now. Oh, you guys are going to love this.